is going on guys welcome to j pal music thanks for watching the channel i really appreciate it be sure to like and subscribe on the channel uh hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so you can be updated on the future episodes coming out and uh, some interesting stuff here that we're going to be discussing today but before we do that uh, i do do a few other podcasts as well such as the 440 guitar podcast if you are a guitarist uh, definitely check that out. Um, it's on YouTube, and then there's some audio episodes as well. If you like video games, the Game is for Life podcast with my friend Arthur Thomas. Uh, we are going to be on a slight hiatus, but we just did some really dope episodes recently, uh, video episodes via YouTube, and then we have a, a you know a pretty good sized catalog of audio episodes as well. But be sure to like and subscribe on that uh, channel as well. A uh, few other things that are going to be coming out, but just uh, will be revealed soon. Not revealed soon, but just uh, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on the other things that I'm working on. Uh, but today we are here to discuss an interesting topic uh, that has been brewing around for the past few days. Haven't been able to discuss it, so I wanted to be sure to do that. Uh, uh, P. Diddy, uh, the old the, the the legend P. Diddy. Uh, brought up the conversation is RMB dead, and he's been having conversations on Instagram with various artists around the topic of RMB dead. I first want to read off a couple of tweets here, and then we and then uh, come back to a consensus on uh, I guess just my thoughts around the topic. So uh, I'm going to share my screen here to show this. Uh, so this happened on August 17th, right? So August 17th, he put out this tweet. Who killed R and B? Such as who shot Mr. Burns, right? <laughs> or who killed Jr. For those who are old enough to understand the connection of that. Uh, and then we have what is your definition of R and B? Uh, to start with these two things. So who killed R and B? Obviously, this is more of a conversation starter amongst the culture, amongst amongst people who have an interest in. R&B, uh, I don't think R&B is dead, but R&B is definitely has changed. And then also there's some other uh, forms of music that have that has embodied different forms of R&B to, for it to definitely be competitive to the art. And I'll get more deeper into that after I close this sharing here. But then, is, then he goes to say, uh, what is your definition of R&B, right? So I have some really interesting conversations. He has some interesting conversations with um, Tory Lanez, uh, you know, talking about, I want to hear love again, as Tory Lanez said, which I thought to be really interesting and poignant at the same time. Says, does, says army does have to be toxic all the time, which I would have to agree. And then he says here on August 19th, he says, now I have your attention. I hope you all understand how important RB is to our culture. We need more love. We need more soul. Um, I'm not sure if everyone understands the importance, but I continue to read on. Uh, it says, why was R&B and hip hop put on the same chart to compete with each other? Can someone in charge over there explain to us why? You know why, P. Diddy. Come on, man. You've put people against each other for for, for God knows how long. Um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of silly for him to even ask that. Uh and then uh, here it says this conversation has was out of love and me purposely wanting to bring attention to R&B is something that I saw the effect of hip hop and R&B balance. That balance is honesty and realness when it comes to together melody is vulnerability and most importantly love. And then this message is that the R&B game needs more love, vulnerability, support. Uh, interesting stuff, man. So I guess do we really think that R&B is dead? No, r and is not dead. It's definitely changed, though. And uh, there's been a lot of artists that have definitely had this conversation as well. So, for example, Tank, supposedly he put out his last album, R&B Money, uh, and he was kind of discussing the factors of R&B as far as how a lot of hip-hop artists are diving more into more melodic things, you know, more like natures and singing, things of that, of that tone uh, within, you know, rap and hip-hop. You know what I mean? So... Uh, 
those things have been connected. Obviously, pop and R and B is kind of has been, you know, uh, molding against each other for decades now. Uh, for decades now, uh, definitely some components of R and B has been in pop forever. Uh, and then, as far as hip hop and whatnot, I think that has really has been a huge forefront over the past couple of decades here, uh, or at least this decade, taking melodies and putting them into uh are into hip-hop and then you know uh for these songs i think that has been very apparent um and then i because for example you have like you know the little dirks you have uh little dirks of little baby um don toliver even though i wouldn't consider don toliver a rapper i think he would consider himself more of an r&b artist than a rapper and then obviously you have you know um summer walker things like that uh but Definitely the the message to me the messaging of R and B has changed right so originally uh, you had a bunch of you had a bunch of songs that were you know very love songs you know uh, I'm on my knees begging you please as uh, as boys to men would say and then um, you know there was kind of a paradigm shift almost in a way where it transitioned more into the act of not necessarily love but physical interaction right so we have the the 112s the uh, the jagged edges things like that and then it kind of spawned off into this interesting toxicity <laughs> as far as for certain things and obviously i think someone who should be included in this conversation if pdd hasn't already had a conversation with him on uh his instagram live or not is drake I think Drake is a is, is definitely he's not a culprit for who killed R and B, but he's definitely someone who has mixed a lot of different genres within hip hop. Uh, that not saying that he got away with, but he's infused it. He's infused it, and, and successfully people caught on and people liked it. A lot of people liked it. And not everyone likes Drake, but when it comes to commercial success, the numbers are there, right? Um, you know, and and he's absolutely someone who. You wouldn't consider a singer, right? But he's definitely infused that type of uh, melodies and notion, melodies and notion within his songs. You know, very, very obviously apparent. Uh, there's been a, a conversation on uh, Kanye West's 808s and Heartbreaks being kind of one of the few, one of the first, I should say, within this, you know, early generation uh, to, to really you know, kind of like being the the forefront of that, you know, or, or kind of uh, spear off to changing the art, if you will. Because um, obviously, anyways, in Heartbreaks, there's a lot of melody stuff on that, an R and B type melody stuff on that, within a hip hop sense. So the Drakes, the Kanye Wests, you know, definitely are ones I think that have kind of spearheaded a lot of that stuff. Tory Lanez, obviously, you know. He's a, he's, a, he's a really good rapper, and he can sing very, very well. You know, Eric Bellinger sings incredibly well uh, and, and, and raps, too, in, in some of his stuff. So it's, it's interesting to see where it seems like the identity, the typical standard identity of R&B has definitely changed, right? Um, I think we do have a lot of – there's certain songs where they're more so – I really love songs, but they're just talking about other things, you know, talking about certain things that may be deemed as toxic or just uh, maybe not just kind of wrap around the bow type stuff. It's more so just like expressing feelings in general, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I think there's some realistic senses to that. You know, Jasmine Sullivan, she's made some amazing stuff, you know um recently uh some walkers made some good stuff too S uh, snow allegra um you know but um uh, but yeah i think as far as for r and B, I i mean i think there has to be you know i i feel like it, it can be uh changed in a way not changed but uh i think definitely there's some there's more work that needs to be done <laughs> i think because what if if we don't and we do we we do have a pretty solid grounding as far as for people being in R and B right now, I think it can improve. I think a lot of it is to do with algorithms as well. There's a lot of people that aren't at the forefront uh, algorithmically when it comes to R and B. So for instance, you have like Amber Mark, um, Amber Mark, people like that where. You know, you kind of have to, like, I've, I've mentioned this artist a few times to some of my friends or some people that I know, and they're like, oh, who's that? You know what I mean? So, algorithmically, 
you know, a lot of these people, I think, kind of get hidden. They kind of get hidden within, you know, the depths of uh, Spotify and all that nonsense. So I think when it comes to R&B, um, there definitely needs to be more love and support. But I think, obviously, you know, there, there seems to be this weird paradigm shift of taking these things of R&B and importing it into other genres. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so. Uh, I, I think it's just... Uh, when it comes to the art of R&B, whether we want it to be traditional boys to men, Jodeci, you know, genuine type R&B, or, you know, uh, more love focused. I think the topics of R&B need to be changed. I think that can be definitely fixed. Uh, not fixed. I shouldn't say fixed, but they, they can be explored, if you will. You know, uh, I think Tori has a point. I, you know, let's hear love songs again. You know what I mean? Because uh, it seems like the... A lot of the toxicity uh, tracks of kind of taking storm have been popular. You know, people don't want to be toxic, but they want to be toxic. So it's just that weird culture there. Um, but yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on that as far as for R&B. You know, it's funny. I, I, like I just said, uh, a couple of videos ago, I was, went to a Boys to Men concert, had a great time, and uh, old school R&B songs. You know what I mean? Wait, you know, and. and uh, Obviously, a lot of the kids today, they could dissect a lot of that stuff and say, oh, this person's simping or whatever, whatever nonsense. But R&B songs are R&B songs. But yeah, I do think that we can, there should be some more exploration to kind of keep that plant alive in that particular fashion. Um, yeah. So what are your thoughts? Put your thoughts in the, in the comments if you'd like, if you care. But I thought it would be warranted for me to discuss this just because this is kind of a big deal. <laughs> it's a pretty big deal. So I wanted to mention it again. j Music, thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to like and subscribe for future ones. And yeah, I'll see you guys later this week.